Let's do this. You go. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Generally, everything out here, it was, as of two years ago, unknown territory. What we're doing out here is very unique. Um, there's a few of us uh, locals that live out here that have actually hiked a ton of different objects to figure out if, how, and can we do this safely. Um, we're actually pulling it off pretty well. When people look at the standard YouTube videos of massive, you know, two minute long wingsuit flights down glaciers and down awesome French valleys and plateaus and ledge systems in Europe, it's badass. Wingsuit in Moab is tangibly different. The jumps here are, um, they're only 20 seconds long. When we first started out, what we'd do is we'd just get a stupid little tube like this and we'd stand on the exit and we'd actually profile down features all the way down and as we profiled it, we'd have this little angleometer, and then all we'd do is we would just basically do trig. We'd go, okay, I'm looking at that gigantic boulder right there, and then my buddy would laser it, and he'd go, okay, that that's 422 feet, and then we'd read off the angle and go, okay, it's 44 degrees, which would be a death jump. <laughs> what I have here is uh, we can't just go, yep, that looks about right, and know that we've got a thousand foot margin. We've never landed any further away than you are. We have to throw a lot of numbers and tools and science at this. I've got an aeronautical engineering degree. I used to fly fighters off aircraft carriers and, and land on them in crazy conditions. And some of that was really terrifying. But there were some times when it was absolutely the most fun ever. Like wingsuit base jumping in terrain like this is the only thing that can even come close to it. It's usually a three or four or 500 foot rock drop. A little bit left or right. On top of maybe a 1,000 foot talus or slope. And the talus is kind of flat and then to a flat landing. And that flat landing may be completely 3D, maybe, you know, cactus, uh, boulder fields, washes. There's tons of hazards. If I'm not totally 100% motivated about it, I'm going to be really pissed when I'm laying there with my ankle broken or my femur busted because I screwed up. The risks and the consequences never decrease. So you better have a really damn good internal motivation reason why you're doing this. I always make sure that when I'm jumping, three, two, one, two. I'm jumping because this is exactly what I want to be doing. And we're flying within 10, 20 feet of boulders and making pylon turns around them, knowing that if we fly outside on the right side of the first one, we can get set up for a perfect dive down the line to a couple more reference boulders, skim those, and then when you get to the last cliff band, you can just flare out with a ton of energy. It doesn't get any better than that when you're in tight formation, down low with friends, flying a line that you're very comfortable with, and then just pushing it just a little bit more and getting a little bit more ground rush and flying as fast as you can, and then coming into safe landings in a big old wide open area like this. It's really, that's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you want. I fully envision myself wingsuit base jumping, maybe not here, but wingsuit base jumping in general, probably till I'm 70.